Hi everyone, good day. I am John Paul Rosario, a first year MBA student at Xavier University and an instructor at Central Mindanao University. This video will cover RA 7394, also known as the Consumer Act of the Philippines. Let's start. First, let us talk about why was the law passed. As stated in Article 16, Section 9 of the Constitution, the state shall protect consumers from trade malpractices and from substandard or hazardous products. With this constitutional provision, the legislative body of the government found it necessary for us to have our own consumer protection law. So, what is RA 7394? Article 1. This act shall be known as the Consumer Act of the Philippines. This is the short title of the law. So what is the purpose of this law? It is the policy of the state to protect the interests of the consumers, promote his general welfare, and to establish standards of conduct for business and industry. Towards this end, the state shall implement measures to achieve the following objectives. Protection against hazards to health and safety. Protection against deceptive, unfair, and unconscionable sales and practices. Provision of information and education to facilitate sound choice and the proper exercise of rights with the consumer, provision of adequate rights and means of redress, and involvement of consumer representatives in the formulation of social and economic policies. From these, eight basic consumer rights have been established, namely, the right to basic needs. This is the right that guarantees survival adequate food, clothing, shelter, health care, education, and sanitation, the right to safety. This is the right to be protected against the marketing of goods or provision of services that are hazardous to health and life. Next, we have the right to information. This is the right to be protected against fraudulent, dishonest, or misleading advertising, labeling, promotion, and the right to be given the facts and information needed to make an informed choice. Next, the right to choose. The right to choose products at competitive prices with an assurance of satisfactory quality. The right to representation. The right to express consumer interests in the making and execution of government policies. The right to redress. This is the right to be compensated for misrepresentation shoddy goods or unsatisfactory services. Next, we have the right to consumer education, the right to acquire the knowledge and skills necessary to be an informed consumer. Lastly, is the right to a healthy environment. This is the right to live and work in an environment which is neither threatening nor dangerous and which permits a life of dignity and well-being. Why do we need to know our rights? Remember that we will never know the remedies we are afforded unless we know our rights that needs to be protected. So where do we file our complaints on the violation of these rights? We need to know first who are our implementing agencies. We have first the Department of Health. Second, we have the Department of Trade and Industry. Next, we have the Department of Agriculture, and lastly, we have our Kawaran ng Edukasyon or Department of Education. Here are some violations on our prohibited acts under RA 7394. Sale of consumer products that are considered prohibited or banned under RA 7394, such as injurious, dangerous, unsafe, and hazardous products, including the importation of products that have been banned or withdrawn from your country of manufacture. Also note that once you are a buyer of these imported goods which have been banned or withdrawn from your country of manufacture, you are also liable under RA 7394. Deceptive, unfair, and unconscionable sales acts or practices, the aim of which is to induce consumers to enter into a sales or lease transaction of any consumer product or service through false representation, fraudulent manipulation, or any other similar means, or taking advantage of consumers' inability to give valid consent. Deceptive sales are when sellers would sell consumer products representing that they have specific characteristics such as the quality, 
standard that they are that they are new and all other things just to lure the consumers into buying when in fact they are not and unconscionable sales happens when the seller takes advantage of the physical or mental infirmity ignorance and such of the consumers inducing them into buying things in the seller's favor Mislabeling of consumer products and services. This includes mislabeling of hazardous or injurious products, food, drugs, medical devices, and other things. Improper price tagging is also considered a violation. Selling of defective products when such is not the intent of the buyer. Now, there are stores that sell second-hand or even defective products. When the intention of the buyer is to buy such products, those are not covered in this act. What is covered here is when the sellers represent that what they are selling are not defective when in fact they are. False, defective, and misleading advertisement. Advertisers should make sure that the information being disseminated to consumers are true, factual, and are not intended to deceive them. So, when your rights are violated, what should you do? According to Article 159 of RA 7294, the concerned department may commerce an investigation upon petition or upon letter complaint from any consumer, provided that upon a finding by the Department of Prima Facie violation of any provisions of this Act or any rule or regulation promulgated under its authority, it may moto proprio or upon verified complaint commerce formal administrative action against any person who appears responsible, therefore. The department shall establish procedures for systematically logging in, investigating, and responding to consumer complaints into the development of consumer policies, rules, and regulations, assuring as far as practicable, simple, and easy access on the part of the consumer to seek redress for his grievances. So, when is it applicable, or when can you complain? So there are requisites before you can file a complaint for violations under RA 7394. First, when the complainant is a natural person. As defined in RA 7294, consumer means a natural person who is a purchaser, lessee, recipient or prospective purchaser, lesser, or recipient of consumer products, services, or credit. In comparison to juridical persons, which are persons granted legal personalities, such as corporation, partnership, sole proprietorship, or any association, natural person pertain to humans. Second, when the subject of complaint is a consumer product or services. As defined in RE 7294, consumer products and services means goods, services, and credits, debts or obligations, which are primarily for personal, family, household, or agricultural purposes, which will include but not limited to food, drugs, cosmetics, and devices. This means that only consumer products or services are covered under this Act. Lastly, when the complaint is in violation of RA 7394. So what to do when a consumer has a complaint? Before lodging a complaint to the protection agency concerned, first, you have to identify the problem and what you believe would be a fair settlement. For example, the problem is a defective product and what do you want to happen? Do you want a refund, replacement, repair? Second, gather documentation regarding your complaint. So for example, receipts, proof of warranty, and any other proof of purchase. Third. Go back to where you made the purchase. Calmly and accurately explain the problem and what action you would like taken. If you are not satisfied with the response, write a formal letter of complaint to the Consumer Protection Agency concerned, be it BPI, DOH, Department of Agriculture, or Department of Education. So, uh, let's concentrate on lodging a complaint with BPI. You may go to dti.gov.ph click the file a complaint button and then you will be redirected to this page so in this page you can either uh, download the complaint form and fill it up or prepare a complaint letter with the following details complete name address email and contact number of complainant and respondent narration of facts demand 
scanned in a test proofed transaction and any government issued ID on the complainant. So if you want to fill up the form, here is a blank form which you can download on DTI's website. It's actually a four-page document. Or if you don't want to fill up the form, you can write a complaint letter, a sample of which will be shown during a discussion on October 3, 2020. How does DTI handle complaints? On an article published on October 18, 2011, then Director of DTI's Bureau of Trade Regulation and Consumer Protection, Director Victoria Mario A. Di Magliba said in an interview that, upon receipt of a complaint, the DTI would send notices of mediation to parties involved. Mediation is supposed to be conducted within five days. He said DTI made every effort to resolve the issue during the mediation process to save the complainant time and expense. If the parties fail to reach an agreement during the mediation stage, the case is submitted for arbitration, with both parties required to submit their position papers. A decision is then rendered by the arbiter. The whole process, from a seat in the complaint to the arbitration decision, should ideally last only 20 days. So, if any of the parties are against the decision of the arbitrary officer or of the department secretary after appealing within the department, a petition for certiorari is then filed with the proper court. Only then will the case or will the complaint become a court case. So where do you file your complaint? Complainers within Metro Manila may submit their duly accomplished complaint form or complaint letter through email at consumercare at dti.gov.ph or in person to the Director, Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau, DTI, Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau or FTEB at this address. Or for complainants residing outside Metro Manila, please refer to the Directory for the appropriate provincial office. The Directory of Provincial Offices is available at DTI's official website. Prescription of Actions Any complaint of the consumer as defined under Section 1A, Rule 2 of this order for violation of the Consumer Act shall be filed within two years from the time the consumer transaction was consummated or a deceptive or unfair and unconscionable act or practice was committed, or in case of hidden defects, from the date of discovery thereof. After the said period, the filing thereof shall be barred. This is in accordance with the Department of Administrative Order No. 7, Series of 2006, issued by DTI. For all other pertinent information regarding RA7394, such as specific violations and prohibited acts under it, under the discussion on RA7581, also known as the Price Act, please join our legal meet on October 3, 2020, 1 to 3 p.m. That's it for this video. I hope you've learned something. Thank you.